Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how I gather my quantities for my quotations using digital takeoff software. I'll be using Bluebeam Review to prepare this quantity takeoff. I use a combination of digital takeoff software with estimated software to gather my quantities and to prepare my estimates. Then I take the quantities and input them into my estimating program. The estimating program that I use is called Craftsman Costbook. Craftsman Costbook is an estimating software combined with the construction costbook. Well, my name is Lewis Henry from a master's construction and today I'll be sharing with you how to do a quantity takeoff it for the framing, drywall, and acoustic ceilings. So when it comes to the frame and drywall, sometimes there's insulation in this portion. I use the same calculation that I get from the framing numbers for my insulation. So you'll see as I go through the estimate, how I organize my estimate and how I come up with my total quantities. And some of the benefits of using digital takeoff quantities is that it's real easy to get all the quantities that you need for your estimate. Just have to Use the software right here and just click on a couple points. You'll see as I go through it, but you just click on a couple points and it'll spit out a total for you. You have to understand exactly what you're measuring and you should be all right. Everything will, will be displayed down here in the box when you start to do all your markups. So let's not take much longer. Let's try get into this. So First parts that we're going to be doing is gathering the totals for the estimate. We're going to be using blue beam right here. After we gather all our totals and you'll see we organize them with the tools that I have right here and tell your frame in order. So I'll select each item, mark it up and it will display down here separately. And I'll be adding those, like I said, into my estimating software where you can add in all your markups, your profit, and other things to make sure that you're profitable, you're not losing money. That's another video on this down in markups, profits, and margin. Let's jump right into it. Let me start to show you how I get my estimate totals and take you through the steps. So obviously the first step would be to open up the drawing, which I have right here. After you open up this drawing, you're gonna have to calibrate it. Take a look through the whole drawing before you start. But for this one, I'm probably just going to jump right into it. So it looks like this might be the lower plan. Let's zoom in and see. Okay, so I don't see no wall labels in here. See a couple here. I'm not sure if that's a wall label. Let's go check and see if there's a wall legend in here. And it looks like there is the wall types, partition types. We have P1, P2. EW1, EW2. We're going to look at these and see which ones that we're going to be getting prices for. I like to start in the bottom right hand corner, work my way around. So I see a P1 right here. The way the P1s look. So it's not labeled everywhere, but I am assuming that these are all wall P1s. Start to do our estimate right here. First, we're going to have to calibrate it. So now we got a measurement right here. Calibrate it. Before you calibrate, you gotta look up here and make sure you got the measurements the way how you want them sorted out. So I got it going from millimeters to feet and inches. You got different options right here if you just want inches, yards, whatever, millimeters, centimeters, whatever. Okay. Just select both of them. Okay, so we're gonna calibrate right over here. This is the amazing thing about using a digital takeoff software. So you just have to click on a couple of points. And it'll start to do all the calculations for you. So for feet and inches. I'm going to take this number. Okay, so this is decimal feet. Click. Okay. Should be converted. So how do we check that? You're gonna check that by clicking on the measurement tool, the length tool. I'm gonna go across that same area that we just calibrated. 
and should equal to something close to what you typed in. Let's keep going through this estimate. Do it just like how it build it. So I'm gonna start with the framing area because the first thing I would do is I go into the project, I'd lay everything out. But let's keep going anyhow. So we got P1. Like I said, I'm assuming all these walls are P1. They all have the same hatch on them. Let's go around and get all these walls. So the good thing about using digital takeoff software is that it doesn't really take you too long to calculate a whole drawing. So I'm gonna go through this page pretty quickly. This is the first page, the framing pan. And there you go, I got a good amount of it already marked up. So you'll see we have these openings and stuff right here, right? So I'll go from here. This is a door open and you may see a space here and think that you don't gotta measure it, but there's gonna be something above the door. It's only a small area, so don't even worry about that. Just leave it into your estimate. So we're gonna leave it in our estimates and let's see. What is this wall? P1 seems to be going all the way over there, simple calculation. All we're doing right now is just getting the linear feet for each wall. Because this is all P1, you just go through, mark everything up. So you could do this pretty quickly, like I said before. If you're not using a digitizer to come up with your quantity totals, I highly recommend that you use it. I use Bluebeam. It's pretty cost effective. They got like a studio. They got all these features and stuff that you can use to share information with your team in real time. And it's real convenient. Another popular program that people use is Plan Swift. I tried it out briefly, but I kind of like the combination of the different software, being able to input the information and making sure that I'm inputting it. I mean, no what program you use to do your estimates or how you do your estimates, you still do it the old school way where you just do it manually, just measure everything, take it off, mark it up, or do you use a digitizer? Since I've been introduced to this program, this has been the only program I've been using to do my digital takeoffs. So this video may be a little long. So what I'll do is I'll probably split this up into three different takeoff videos. Probably just go through the framing on this one. I guess you can get the concept of what I'm doing here, but let's finish up this. I'm gonna go through everything and Mark it up so you can see what I'm doing. And just so you understand, this is, I'm not just doing this as a YouTube video. I am, but I mean, this is the actual project that I'm pricing. I have a couple of projects going on right now. And hopefully I get another one of these projects I'm pricing, but you know, as an estimator, you have to continuously put out projects or put out pricing and make sure that you get something you got to be able to put out a good amount so you can understand what your winning percentage is. So currently my winning percentage is around like 12%. I have a Excel spreadsheet where I track everything. And I actually use um, HubSpot to keep everything in one place. Well, I'll go to a video with all those things as well. Let's continue with this estimate and finish it off. So P1, they got this hatch everywhere haven't labeled it everywhere. Some of the frustrating things about looking through projects sometimes. But if you're unsure about this information, you would just write a question, send it off to the to the contractor where we got the drawn documents from. We well, usually have a deadline for questions, so hopefully you're in the, the time frame for for asking questions, but even if you're not, send them a question and see what they say. They may respond. They should respond if they want to price. They want you to price it accurately. So they usually do respond. So 
Sorry for rambling on so long there. Here, let's continue with this estimate. This project is going to be closing on what day? Leave it closes March 1st or something. I still have a couple of days, maybe on Monday. Today's February 17th, 2022. I think it closes March 1st. 2022 so I'm gonna be preparing this estimate in advance after I go through this estimate get all my numbers everything I'll make sure I go through the the drawings a little bit more detailed and I'll go through the specifications as well read the specification documents read the scope of work, make sure I get a good understanding of exactly what this project is about, what's going on, if there's going to be phases, make sure you read through the documents so you get familiar with everything. Get familiar with the, with the products or the, the section that you're pricing. So you should be familiar with the master format. This would be section nine that I'm pricing, interior finishes which is separated into different parts, which is, I'm doing all part nine, which is the, well, the framing I believe is a combination of part five, but they usually do have it in part nine with the drywall. So it's a combination, all right, it is section nine, the acoustic ceiling, framing, drywall. All the information would be in section nine of the spec specifications. Let's continue to mark everything up. Okay, am I taking this one all the way through? Yes, I am. You just ends here. Yeah. Got a nice little detail here. What is this? I don't know. Let's see. You got to refer to drawing number four. A202. To get a better clarity with it now. No, let's go to that page and see what the information is. Oh, you see, I just click on something, move that line, just hit Control Z, put it right back where it is. So let's just save this. Make sure we don't lose our information. Got quite a bit priced on. And you see how long was that? As you can see, most of these walls were P1. So for this project, actually have somebody that is very good with doing cylinder blocks so i'll go through i'll continue to price this project i'll just call them up later on let them know that i got this project where i got quite a bit of cylinder blocks on it tell them how i'm pricing it and see how he charges finish up the pricing let them know that i sent in a price and if we get this project well then he has contract that he didn't have to do nothing to get all he had to do is tell me what his cost is per square foot or per block or however he charges I would calculate it that way for him I would add a markup on it I'd add a labor markup to be specific to make sure that I'm getting my profit I usually like to get around like 15% minimum profit. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll even mark it up to like 25%. You gotta use your discretion and understand you can't mark up the prices too high because then you're not even gonna get the project. It's kind of worthless process of just pricing too high. You're not gonna get no jobs that way. But at the same time, I price a little high. I get a couple of these projects. So my percentage, like I said, is only around 10 to 12 percent those couple of products that i get and get them at a good price which is very beneficial to me i don't gotta do a lot of projects so most of the time the projects that i price are around i could say anywhere from around forty thousand to a hundred thousand this year i'm going to be trying to get on some big, bigger projects something probably closer to a million dollars I know that's a big jump from a hundred thousand, but still gonna be pricing these and 
making sure I keep my skills sharp and then I could get some of these projects. Those projects will last a little bit longer. Keep my guys busier. Allow me the time to build my operations. Hire on the necessary staff as needed because like I said, those projects will be taking longer to complete. So even though we got a schedule and a time frame, I can still hire staff as needed to make sure that complete this project on time and efficiently. So here we go. We got most of it marked up. A couple more walls here. These are all cylinder block walls. Doesn't even look like there's any drywall on this wall, on this project. It's all cylinder block. Cylinder blocks are good for fire rated partition walls. Just wonder why they want so much cylinder block inside here. But either way, that's the design of the building. That's what we're pricing, and every project's going to be different. And even though I can pull up my quantities pretty quickly, that just means that I got numbers or linear foot feet or whatever right now. I gotta still add heights, but let's look at the bottom here and see what we got. So you'll see here, we got all the measurements that I got. Round decimal feet. These are easy to transfer over calculations. So you don't gotta convert them back to decimal feet when you're adding them into your quantity takeoff software. But yeah, here we go, height. Everything's marked at 12 already. I don't know what I did in my item, but that's okay. And you'll see it just spits out uh, the square footage. So total square footage of all those walls so far, 5,894 and 72 square feet. But what wall is what? Like these were all P1s. What we could do is Label this a little bit better. So you can see everything's labeled here in the bottom. After I got all my measurements, it's going to go through and start to label every item. So you just click on the item. You'll see it highlighted here. I'm looking for the wall description. The wall description for this one is P2. So let's click on that. I labeled a couple of them so you just see it pops right up. Goes the next wall, same thing. So I'll just go through the whole draw and just do this, label everything, populate everything, and you'll see everything starts to organize by the label number. So you see we have our total measurement of five thousand eight hundred and ninety-four and seventy-two. So this is the square footage of all the walls that we've measured. So I'm going to go through, just make sure I finish up all the, the dimensions or all the linear footage for all my walls. And then after I'm done that, I'll come back in here and uh, start to label everything. So let's go through this. See a wall over here. I remember I didn't press. So it's wall P2. And I hope you understand what you're pricing and what you're building. And we're not just going to and just marking up lines for the sake of marking them up. These are actually actual walls and things that are going on. You got to be familiar with what's going on so you can understand the building process. And if something's missing, if you got to ask some questions because something doesn't make sense based on what you're looking at or what you're drawing but, or what you're pricing. But just got to make sure you know what's going on. So this is like another separation wall or something i get to separate this side from the other side of the building and uh, let's see so right here okay, that door goes through this one here i got a little mistake here so i said it's all right no problem delete this line we're real calculated so the wall's gonna start from over here 
we're gonna extend it to where it's supposed to go so it doesn't go straight through i had it going straight through before but it does it so i was gonna go all the way over here and in between this wall looks like we have some glazing and a door right here so you probably have the cylinder blocks going all the way around you're gonna have to leave a door opening in there they're gonna put the the frame in i believe for the for the window i don't know if it's a full size window but you can always verify that information on the drawings specifications so for now i'm going to finish up all my pricings as i keep saying so let's keep going let's get into the habit of always saving this you don't want to go through do your whole estimate then it save it something happens you got to redo it all over let's get into the habit of clicking save every once in a while every five minutes ten minutes or so so we got all our more walls let's keep going up we got another wall right here dinner mark up go through just mark that up it's between the storage room and the washroom Good. Start from this bottom right corner and just go around and see another section right here. It's pretty basic what we're doing. We're just going through, we're just getting all our markups. Should understand what's going on by now, but this program makes it real easy. Just mark everything up and keep it all organized. You know, some people will say that they made a mistake with this program or something happened and they don't like it. It's just like everything else. You just got to learn how to use it properly. Steps to take and understand what to do. I think some of the problems that you got to look out for is, is the scale right here. So you'll see this says 175, 1 to, to 75. Remember, it's in millimeters. So as you go through this drawing, you see you're trying to mark up somewhere else. These measurements are at a different scale. So you couldn't use the, the markup tools right now and expect to receive the same numbers. Like if you were to convert 435 into feet, to this, you clicked on this, clicked here, the number's probably gonna be wrong, which it is, 10 feet. Definitely is it, 435 millimeters. This area of the drawing right here is a different calibration, so you'd have to recalibrate it. Some more advanced ways go through and calibrate each section or each detail. You'd have to go through and create windows or phases and then calibrate each one differently. So every time you click into it, you wouldn't have to recalibrate your whole drawing for detail. Let's just keep going through. Got all of my walls marked out. Okay. So I get all my walls marked out. I like to do a count measurement on all my doors. So, use a different computer every once in a while. Got my laptop. I do my estimates on sometimes. Looking through right here, I don't see my my door check mark. So I just have to go. I'll just use a generic one for now. These are ceiling lines. All right, so let's just go and just make a generic one. So we'll click over here on the count sign. Count. It's ready. Start from the bottom right. One more wall right here to dry, in, so. One door, two door, three doors. These are all single doors. Single doors. Go do mark up every single door and have an opening. Each of these door openings are going to be a frame that I have to install. It's always important to understand what you're pricing. You got to understand how we build. And when we're doing the interior framing and the drywall, we got to make sure that we install the door frames 
for the company has come to install the doors. We're not installing the doors, we're just doing the frames. So you gotta add that in. You may not wanna price it in, but you have to. Cause you're gonna be the one that's building the frame and the drywall in. The only way for that door frame to get in there nicely is if we install it. So we're gonna do it. Let's just measure all these doors. So, see any more single doors here? No more single doors. You got a couple in the exterior walls. So let's go out. Let's close this out. Control Z. Okay. Got those. How many double doors do I got? Click on the number tool again. The count tool. We got one double door. Two double doors. This one's on the exterior wall. So we're not going to be counting that one because we're not doing no building over there. That's the last double door. So what, two double doors? Just gonna guess and let's just verify that. Click save again. Just gonna verify that by going here to the count tool. And we're gonna label it. Well, we know we have more single doors than we did double doors. Call this single door openings we're gonna call this one double let's see it popped up on there because i used those terms before click it see that information has gone from there now now you can see that you've got double door openings and you got Two. You got two double door openings. Where did the other one go? The other one's down here. Single door openings. We got 18 of them. 18 door frames. Basically, potentially 20 door frames we're going to be installing. Two of them are going to be double doors. So, say around four feet. Eight feet wide. It's going to be a bigger opening. Got everything marked up. I think I'm comfortable with the way all this estimate's going so far. I just like to pull out my information right away. I do it according to time sometimes. I know I said to price it according to the way that you're building it, but right now I got this already. So I like to go over to the reflected ceiling plan. When I go over to the reflective ceiling plan, I'm going to start to price that one. The measurement should be the same scale, 1 to 75, so I don't got to redo nothing. And the reason I like to do this is because this is real easy to calculate. Sometimes I'll even start with the reflective ceiling plan, just because it's real easy to get the, the dimensions and all the numbers. So I'm only going to have a couple sections left to price after I'm done this. I have a good portion done. So reflected ceiling. We got two by four ceiling tiles, it looks like. Let's click on that. I got a tool already set up for that. And now instead of clicking on every corner, I can just click, drag to the next spot, release. This one I gotta click on every corner because it's a little awkward shape. So just go in, click on all of those. I could have double clicked right here. Let's go back. Okay, there you see, I double clicked and it just brought that line over to the next side. Go in here. Okay. So as we're marking this up, we're trying to be as precise as possible. So try to click on the corners to exactly where they're going. Don't don't be like just clicking anywhere, like in the middle of them. We want precise measurements. So these measurements are going to be used to transfer over to our estimating software. Once we punch in these totals, you'll see how our quotation just populates by itself. And all you got to do is just make sure the numbers are correct. Put in your markup percentage, profits, and everything will be ready to go. My estimating software is going to have all that stuff kind of set up for me, but I do adjust them on a per project basis. 
things that do say the same would be the things like the oh, I'm sorry the markup or the margin or my yeah my markup's gonna be the same so my overhead cost would generally be around eight percent I don't have an office I'm working out of home I don't really have no real business expenses per se I got these programs that I use it doesn't need a lot of maintenance every once in a while every couple of years or so I update my programs but when it comes to my everyday maintenance of upkeeping my office uh, my overhead is very low because I'm just doing this from home I don't got no expenses other than a cell phone really but the expenses that I mark into my overhead would be my WSIB costs and yeah my WSIB cost which is around 8% goes lower every year here they've been promoting that a lot in Canada because these WSIB are so health and safety things that you gotta pay to this agency we're just kept going higher and higher my percentage used to be at like 9% and every year it used to raise by another 2% so just trying to maintain and trying to price jobs trying to get jobs a good portion of your pricing is just going to go to them for health and safety it's just, it just doesn't seem too fair that's the way how the system was set up and just got to add it into your cost like I said now they're lowering it so things should be a little better prices should be a little bit lower for contractors they're out there trying to stay competitive and so I'm just gonna go to finish up this ceiling estimate I got most of the four by two sections priced out a couple more sections left to do but earlier on I was looking at that wood area up top or I was looking at that ceiling area up top it looks like some hatch type of wood or some type of special ceiling over there I don't usually do specialty ceiling so I probably won't be pricing that section I'm gonna price the standard stuff that I price which is the ACT ceiling and drywall ceiling I'm gonna go through and see so I got all the ACT ceiling marked on as you can see we got a couple of spaces left so one more here for the ACT right here in the middle let's run go click on the perimeter this works out perfect for me when I'm doing my pricing because when I transfer these numbers over to my estimating software all it's gonna need is the square footage so I got this section on my estimating software set up as a line item an assembly item I got the assembly item and I actually deleted the material totals from the assembly item and then I put in a different line for the materials all the time the materials are different there's not just a standard price for ceiling tiles there's all different type of ceiling tiles so can't just throw it in there to your line item i just want to make sure that i always got the specific price just for the materials needed for this we'll finish this off go back to my tools click on drywall ceiling we got drywall ceilings here so there's a wall here we'll go around it don't have to it's not going to be a big area but just so that keep your estimate maybe take off looking nice just click on these see i offset that one by a little bit it's not going to give you that major of a difference in the calculation that little touch there so let's keep going and it's a perfect square or square with no edges you can just drag release gives you those measurements and here goes some more drywall ceiling so all i need is a square footage cost the way how i prepare my estimates
So the information that I'm looking for is the ceiling height. So it looks like everything is at 2,500. Do I know how much 2,500 is off the top of my head? I do not. I believe that that's around eight feet high. So the ceiling is going to be eight feet high. So we need to know the space in between the ceiling and the actual deck height or the, the joist height. Or whatever we're connected to so that we can get our hanger wires connected to the above structure hanging down we need to know that space so we can calculate the amount of wire needed to get this job done and we are estimators or just the proper terminology would be quantity surveyor I'll go through a video on that. I kind of have my own opinion on the differences, or I guess everybody does. Um, I'll have a series of videos going through different topics that you can refer to. Talking about each of these issues and each of these things that are important that, to you as a construction estimator. So, so now there you go. I got my ceiling measured up. That was pretty quick. So what's left for me to price right now would be I gotta get my drywall and my insulation. So got ceiling board, double doors, highlight. Let's go back to this highlight. It's page six. This is our partition plan, our floor plan. Now we're moving through. Everything's just organized, detailed in here. There's no need for paper. Even though I still use paper. I guess there's, there is, there's always a need for paper and marking things up. Everything's separated, four by two, count measurements, ceiling board. Couple notes. Oh. So once I finish up my drywall, this estimate will basically be uh, finished. As you can see, this probably took me around an hour, hour and a half to get my totals. It's just my quantities. I still haven't read through all the specs. So say an estimate project this size probably take me two hours to price to go through all the, the documents read the specs most of the things are standard so you don't gotta read through everything but you still do you still gotta make sure you get familiar with these documents because that's how you start to make mistakes and those things could cost you quite a bit of money so everything's the same wall looks like they're all p1 I'm gonna go through, get the drywall and all these faces here. After I get all my measurements, I'm gonna put a height to everything. The standard height that popped in on my template was 12 feet. Let's see what happens when we go through and we look at the elevation and see what number we come up with. This is the next step, though, is to mark out all your drywall. This one seems to be fairly easy. Not a lot of corners on this wall, so we're just going to go through. Speaking of that, yeah, corners are another thing. Sometimes there's a lot of corners on these jobs. If there's a lot of corners and things start to get complex, you count out your corners and add a price in. For the, for the amount of corners that you got to cut, sometimes those corners take extra materials. They may need it built a certain way. So you just got to make sure that you're adding in for those extra little bits. So for every corner, you probably just put a check mark or document it somehow let's count those corners and you can use those corners actually for documenting your your corner beads or your inside corner beads so 
outside corners the count number that you have times the height will give you the exact linear feet that you need for your outside corners for the inside corners i use a wide flex taping material it bends and it's pushing the corners it use it nice so for the inside quarters i got to calculate the linear footage and how much linear feet come in a row so i'll probably need around two three packs looking at this project but those are other numbers that you could calculate this is p1 there you go there's a second one for p1 we didn't have a label so we're gonna label this so now you know 100% that all these little areas and make sure that you price them in also you're going to be paying for these materials out of your pocket which we don't want to be doing let's go through this drawing and read the notes start to get familiar with everything so this was a quick video to show you how I prepare my estimates using a digitizer you can use the information and knowledge in this video to help you prepare your own estimates. As you can see, I went through the estimate pretty quickly. I definitely recommend using a digital takeoff software, estimating software and a construction cost book. I use Blue Beam Review with Craftsman cost book. That's all I need. Craftsman Costbook is an estimating software and a construction cost costbook in one. Using a combination of these things will improve the accuracy on your estimates and will save you a ton of time. If you have any questions, tips, or ideas, then please let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on construction estimating and running a successful construction business. Thanks for watching.